but I think what, what I thought you had said was because it was this type of uh, action that they were performing, that they didn't have to. And, and maybe I misheard. Yeah, it's, well, it was a mock. It was a minor. minor. Right. It was That's a minor. Right. I think that had to do with having an inspector on site. Now, we would have had somebody there. I think that's what he thought. That's thought exactly it. Right. But the, that, that wasn't, the, the point was we would have had an inspector there. And if we had known him, he was going to do that, we would have had somebody from our staff there with him, regardless if it was major or minor. But I think because it was minor, the point I was trying to make was that I think perhaps that's why the gentleman went on in there. That, that is not how the procedure is. We, we should have been notified, as Bill said, and then we will send a staff member to meet that person. There's an easy fix for that. Check. Very easy fix for that. Check. Don't allow anybody in without county keys or city keys. Well, yeah. they've been working on it, so I think it had been out there. So I think the guy was comfortable about to make that final adjustment and felt, yeah, I get in there, like Bill said, five minutes, I got it. Done. So, but no, that is, that is not uh, major or minor. Major or minor, we should have. They, they should have sure, access without your notification. Mm -hmm. right. I got a quick question for you. When you were talking earlier about this bill, you were, everybody's talking about this specific <coughs> bill right now. This is not the first time we've had sewage in the Mississippi River. I, for one, are tired of buying bottled water and gallons of water for the last two years because I can't brush my teeth with water now, can't cook with it, can't make coffee with it, can't make tea with it. My animals have to drink it, my dogs, my horses. It's not fit for me to drink, but my animals have to drink it. You had said earlier about this bill, but you had mentioned about rain ball. And it kind of, the way I caught it, the way you said it was, well, we got a lot of rain ball, we're going to get sewer in the river. Why uh, is the sewer plant that's going to I think Mr. Davis made that comment, not me, because I can tell you, if, if, if from the other pool, it needs to be shown, Hydro events and Mr. Davis spoke of. Our new equipment has handled that. It, we can't have this with the hurricane, the heavy rains from the hurricanes the last two years. We've had this equipment. We have not had a spill like that from the equipment malfunction. So, abs absolutely. Any spills at all? I can't agree with you on that uh, because what we've done will take care of that. It's been a big one in December. Take care of that. Now, last yeah. December, absolutely, we had 16 inches of rain. <coughs> and the new plant almost, I mean, it maxed the task capacity. It just couldn't hold it on. So it did discharge when we had 16 inches of rain. I've, but, I've got a question for this gentleman here. He's been waiting for a while to answer this question. I'd like to answer this. Well, let me finish with him and I'll go to him. Thank you. Yes, sir. Keep going. Well, like I said, I just, I was going to try to find out uh, no, I ran if there's going to be an end result to this, but I might have to take stock of Walmart where I buy my water out. <laughs> I, I, I understand. I, I understand just that. But here's the deal. I just kind of alluded to it, and in there with the SCADA system that's going to, that, that was, that we were purchased to prevent what happened in the end of December, it's ironic that it made it happen, because that's what we're trying to do. Since we've had the majority of the SCADA system in, uh, we've reduced our inflow and in infiltration by 25% minimal, which means what we're doing now is a combination, it's just not the SCADA system that's going to help us identify, we're going to use that technology. We're now identifying how stormwater is getting into our sewer pipes, which is all that water goes to the treatment plant. And we're, so we're not trying to treat the sewer. We got all the stormwater from the streets, and then that's what causes that problem. So, so we're double dosing on that with the technology and uh, the, the, uh, the finding of inflow and infiltration that we've had in the past as technology to do. Thirdly, what we're doing, uh, just as a safe measure, we're building another two million gallon basin at Winkle Pitching. Speaking of, we finally got APD permitting uh, two weeks ago to begin that process. Uh, so hopefully we'll be done with that considerably through that process before the, before the rainy season gets here. So that's the difference with the water industry. It's done. Okay, I'm just going to batch up several so I don't take up a lot of time. The big one is, how do you get a copy of your SOP? And for that matter, why don't you publish it on your website? That's a big one. The second is, where in this SOP does it say, what was the procedure for checking to see if the employees had done their job correctly in checking at the pump station? From what you're saying, I, I haven't heard that there was one. Another question is, in that SOP, where does it say you're supposed to put signs out? Related to that, did you put a sign at Bay Tree Road Bridge, which is the first bridge below the leak site? No, I can tell you that now, Mr. Porter, because EPD requires you to put a sign at the 
requires it to be accessibility, and that Bay Tree Bridge is not accessible to the public. Sure, uh, Gornto uh, is highly accessible to the public behind the Salty Snapper, where there's not a bridge, but we know folks are back there on the four wheels and thing, and even a sign back there where, where the two rivers can join, and then at the ramp of 131. How about so Boyan? That's why we didn't put one at Bay Tree. How about Bland Park, which is halfway in between Bay Tree and Gornto? What well, I'm going to tell you tonight, we, we can take this. We can take this up with a letter. Day. I don't want to spend all the time with signage because you've been through that before with EPD. We followed every protocol of EPD uh, uh, required us to do. Uh, but I'd be happy to take that up. And we're always willing to, to look at other things we can do and expand where we put signs. But did you put a field, sign? Still to ask your question, we followed the protocol we were supposed to follow. Okay. Well, I, then how do we get a copy of that protocol? APD, you're very familiar with them. Go to George EPD. We have to go to EPD to get the protocol for, that the Valdosta City is using. When we, yes, because we have to answer. They're the regulatory agency for the state of Georgia. We have to answer to them. We, we, we have I think to the point is we're, we're citizens here, and we want you to do more than just what the state tells you. And we yes. want you to do things for yes, us. Sir. You work for us, right? And I'm, and I'm, and we're, like you said, we're so don't here. just go by what the state tells you. Do what you wanted, what we want you to do for as citizens <laughs> of, of this community, okay? And he's a citizen of this community. He's yeah. saying we want the signs where we need to see them. Absolutely. We don't want them just where the regulation says they have to be. I have to disagree with that whatsoever. I followed up with Mr. Porter and by saying we were certainly looking at expanding that as we do. I mean, as with this bill, we followed the protocol. Mm -hmm. we need to well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you did. You did not do what we want, what we need. You I'm followed right. the protocol. I'm writing down additional signs. I have yeah, we see the right, right. right. speaker. That's exactly what I just said to you, and you, you, you told me right back. Well, yeah. that's all I want to do is follow the protocol. I just do what the, what the government tells me. Tell that we're going to add signs, I promise. Okay. And so, as a result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Thank you for some of them. I catch base and thrills me. And I up like that's, ten, that's a 10 million gallon catch basin that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about it. What about. doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on because that's what I do for a living. Documentation, because again, I'm, I am concerned that at the end of the day, you can throw up high school while they've got Dawson and Virgin Money at this, but if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have training, and people, and retraining yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just going to have a problem again and again. And I'd like to take the time to show you something it's kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago. And I want to show you my legs. Once I started taking showers in the well system off the Wipaluchi River. That's my legs. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Ripple Beach today. And before I moved to where I am today, I lived four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Jean, he just finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, who lives on 44th. He's on a fixed income, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed income in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Wipaduchi that, that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Parker, Mr. Yes. Uh, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light we found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th January, the 6th of January, at the uh, Valdosta Highway, um, I don't know, Mass and Valdosta Highway 31 and 445. Uh, had an extremely high level of coliform in the coli. 
And, and in today's results came back. Uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently, the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, this year, local space for emergencies. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again. And uh, in the next few days. But we've had, this will be our third health advisory over this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued to Florida on the River Future River. I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah, the health, the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory to come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and, and uh, it's over with. But this isn't that way. It's coming in slow. And, and you know, so for almost a month now, uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the 6th, the DEP data <coughs> was for E. coli, 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters. And it was at 4,500 for California. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia. I believe there's anything above 400 for California, about 400, and 800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of the <coughs> 31 to the six. So, we're, we're concerned about with this, the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's just very, as you know, the river's low, you have very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may even be trapped in some of the, the low lying areas or flues in the, along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I, had, I live two miles from the river, State River City, Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night, and I'm thinking that the city of Isle Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here, when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so, you, you start to see more of this release being done, and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and the Florida Park Health is committed, and they're going to be testing daily until they get, you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisory on the second event. And now it appears we're basically going to another advisory. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be probably issued tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisory will be up until we get those same levels. But then my concern is, and I don't need to drag this out, is what's behind you know, uh, this, this may be a long-term event for us, and, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, to do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And, uh, We've got a lot of, we've invested a lot, and I'll just put it out there and clap that we would hopefully, we would expect the city of Mount Austin to assist us in recouping some of the costs we've had in here to occur to monitor our, and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask, and I'll pull it over from there. About the personal costs, people who have to buy water because they can't drink water in the river. <coughs> Compensation for that at all? Anything in plan? I just, I just I think I just want to go back to the school when we can in Jericho and on the other side of the door to the water. I heard all sorts of things today and last week, earlier today. Could you please explain 
who the contractor was, what exactly happened, how big the hole in the pipe or whatever, where apparently a lot of more sewage came out of wherever it came out of. Explain exactly who was there, what happened, and how that nobody knows it. Because I hear this stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody really, a lot of people don't really know what happened. Yeah, we're, we're engaged with, this, with a uh, technology contractor from uh, uh, late last year, mid last year, to work on a trade system. The name of the company is EMC, and uh, they've done a great job of implementing the technology that we've asked them to deploy for us. And uh, I should talk to this, but uh, we're the, looking at uh, we're in uh, the, uh, and the reason no one noticed the mammals, because it's in the woods, it's probably quarter mile, half mile, half mile off. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're from Dardosta, you probably know where the like, depot and uh, Target is. So if you go behind those stores, it becomes wooded back in that area. If you go back in there a few hundred feet, several hundred feet, that's where the manhole is. And the manhole, there's a manhole on one side of the creek, and then there's a manhole on the opposite side of the creek, so that manhole right there, uh, before it goes across the creek, is where the top came off the manhole, you know, the manhole lid, and that's where it, that's where it came out. So all the stuff right? just came out of one manhole, that's the One manhole, yeah. And yeah, I, I just want to make a statement. I've been sitting here listening to this. I've been sitting here listening to this. I've been a part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take up your time. <coughs> you know, you talk about communication. You're talking about you know, getting the word out and the things going on here. You're going to have to write something. Uh, you can go for a lot of people. I know you guys are many of the council people. You all take it on the chin. I feel like you do. You're not taking it hard on any of us. We hear it from a lot of our constituents. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. There was a spill in the woods, heavily wooded area, behind target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Any more way, anything as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email what, 12 hours before we get to the place, So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, I mean, yes, it's a bad split, but I don't think it's hit any of the waterways from what I've been told. And that wasn't the case. Um, you know, like that work, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out. So from what I'm hearing from you, know, you guys and uh, people here in the audience tonight, I just want to count kind of you know, if you guys send me out to work on a manhole, you send me out to work on a pole, the blow I think I have a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there to answer for these mistakes that I'm And I'm not picking on you guys, I'm not here to you know, show out or anything, I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are, this is the reality of it. It's time for something to be done. Accountability. I know mean, you guys have invested a lot of money into this thing. Uh, so I can probably just for you guys, or you guys sit next to me. I'm here as much as I can. And it's just, it's never ending. I think you know what I'm trying to say. I've been 30 years in the Marine Corps. I've been 30 years, 32 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, doing the same thing. Uh, picking up and trying to hold them accountable for what they do for a living. You know, for reading positions. I've fought with this since up nine the flood and crop with the crop <coughs> infrastructure. Um, at this point today, <laughs> being kept informed all along the way, being one of the people on the release, and being one of the city's official release, my demand. Um, I couldn't be more impressed with the effort and I just went through this transition over the last two and a half weeks to Martin Head meetings with every single person. And every single one right now, the personnel will tell you that I asked this question. I walk this earth and I walk into that meeting and show these people that we're doing everything we can possibly do. 
I would suggest that as we get these new updated meter reading, electronic meter readers that we don't need people to walk the streets anymore, that I want them to walk the 125 crossings we have over waterways with our sewer system. That I want them to put eyes on it as well. That I didn't want this job if we didn't pass FOSS and I couldn't commit $40 million to the further improvements on the system because I can't come up with $40 million over the next four years to keep our promise to you guys and the aggressive timeline that we're on in repairs of this. That uh, I can't be simply open. I do have to <coughs> um, We get parking trouble a little. We kind of done a little before we got approval because we wanted to start that process and now we officially have an approval and that 10 million gallon catch basin will assure us that uh, Nothing. We're two miles from the river now, and that pitch based on trips, and nothing gets near that river at the treatment plant on the rock manuals. We continue to rehab on those for, for probably the next decade. You know that. You know how many there are, you know what we're doing. Additional signage is a great idea as well, John. But, um, you want me to hop off the bridge? I'll just leave one well, of them. I know, but I want you to, to come back to us all that have decontaminated wells when this event is over. And say that the city of Del Doctor is going to support the effort to reimburse us for the well decontaminations. I own four wells. But these folks all live where I am, and they're all going to have to have wells that need decontaminated. It's not a trivial process. That slide had wanted to address a few minutes ago to expound a little on what Ms. Davis had said. We refer to ourselves in Madison County probably <coughs> as fiscally constrained, but in reality we are poor. Our, it's been poor, poor and you know that. Uh, our residents, most of them, don't have the money to pay for the water filtration systems. We had people today who spoke in Madison. They pay anywhere from 45 to 6,000 and above just to get the initial system. That doesn't include replacing the different parts that have to be replaced yearly or however often they need to. When you start talking about buying water, and uh, it's costing our county right now several thousand just to do the testing for the people, because of course we're doing it for free. So for them, because they shouldn't have to pay for it. But when you look at all the different areas that the people have to try to cover, to make sure that they're not using contaminated water. A lot of them don't have the money for it, and because of that, truthfully, a lot of them who have lived close to the river for many, many years, they don't bother. And we don't know what they may, at times, deal with as a result of the water, but they know they don't have the money. They've always been there, or they've been there for a number of years, and they, they say, another spill, and they just don't bother. But the bottom line, and I think with most things, the bottom line just comes down to money, and it hits a lot of our residents very hard along that area. I have a question. I, as far as accountability goes, when these spills happen, are you, is, is anybody fined? I mean, it seems like, is there anything, like if you spill X amount of raw sewage, does the EPA fine the city? Is there any kind of... The EPA, EPB can find the state. But that is not like automatic. It's not, it's not automatic or it's based on the gallon or whatever. It's, they, they do have that authority to, to uh, have they? Uh, have they ever? Have ever? I've been here, I've been city manager two years. Um, since I've been here two years, no, that we've not had We've been going on for a long time. We're before 09 has been happening. So we're, it's we're under the similar. Uh, still from Trump with us. PD, uh, but um, as far as I can remember back, I don't think you've had a fine. They, you know, what they've done in lieu of fines is they added more projects to keep the problem from happening. They, they'll, they'll do that many times, rather than a dollar value, they'll add more projects to the consent order. How will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I ask, a year or two ago, my oh yeah, we have a place in the future. My lads playing around the water. We kayak a lot, Mr. Scott, like you do, and enjoy the water. Get the truck. I have a text from a local official. Stay out of the river. The spill had happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day, and I've been in the river playing with my lab and having a good time on the Kitchen River. 
How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access on the river, know about these bills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, animals are in that water, their farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I, I don't think I have an answer to that. You ask anybody on that email list, you can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification. You get more specific. With, it's well, and it's not going to be the waterway. Obviously, we don't want to egg on anybody's face. We had one person in the campground get a reverse 911 call, and we have quite a few people in the campground have no internet. <coughs> so we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do, you know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a poor case. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting rid of Mr. Parker, is anybody here from Madison County? Uh, do y'all live within how far of the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Okay, so we have a code red system in Madison County in our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type of announcement notification system. Y'all are yeah. relying a lot on the systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in the, in the event of a catastrophic electrical outage, they all are on battery or generator backup. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the purchase for more yeah. generators for backup. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but right, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well, well pumps for overflow of the sewage? They do uh, use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifer, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, not wild allowed statement. Us to do it. Yeah, we only allow to be surface discharge. I know down like in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they dug a well 3,500 feet, and they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros, some cons, some folks are pro to that. Some folks don't think they uh, that should be happening either. So, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's all right. soil condition. Yeah, well, so they use a bubble okay. system in South Florida. Yeah, they inject them into the uh, brackish water They're system. going into the lower, lower Florida. I don't know yeah, if you can do that. Yeah, I don't know. You get higher in the it'd be hard to get those. Well, whatever you can do to communicate with us, get us some information, and support us, uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the 10th when all anybody knew was there was still. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84, which I believe <coughs> we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone in Valdosta know how many river miles from US 84 to the state line? Uh, 27, or about three days. And is anybody measuring at the intermediate boat ramps to see how the sewage is moving down the river? Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have uh, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. As you know. <coughs> okay. Did you do it at Knight's Ferry and Magic? We haven't done it consistently, but we have done it when a, when a spill, you know, when a, when a location popped up, it, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP on specific days. Yeah, on specific days. And we did a site. We did a Okay, and with the nice here in Nick and USA 4 and 
straight line, but Valdosta has not. Valdosta right. basically flushed its sewage down the river. No, no sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. And Mike, just like the gentleman here said, when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And 